continue to clear the whole land of terrorism and to capture tunnels and terrorist weapons. The restructuring committee takes several resolutions and measures to consolidate subsidies and to improve the standard of living through price reductions. Erdogan's government reduces the authorities of the army. Live from Damascus, I'm Daniel Nizam. Prime Minister Dr. Wael Halaki asserted the government's determination to improve the economic situation and to ensure decent living for all citizens and to fix acceptable prices. Subsidies will be enlarged and various food baskets will be presented as soon as possible. During his chairmanship of the meeting of the Committee of Restructuring Subsidies, the Prime Minister pointed out that new economic mechanisms will be adopted in order to enable citizens to bear the burden of daily life imposed by the current crisis in the country. The Prime Minister pointed out that in spite of the unjust economic siege and deceptive propaganda war, the government continues to confront all challenges, including the attempts of some businessmen to raise prices. The Prime Minister stressed the necessity of taking strong measures against corrupt businessmen in order to protect consumers and to enable them to reach various materials in the market within a few days. The government decided to add new food products to the list of subsidized materials. This decision was adopted today. The government also allowed every household to have 400, 400 litres of fuel at the current price. Under directors from President Bashar al-Assad, the Prime Minister Dr. Dr. Wael Halaki endowed the university professor, dentist, pharmacist and inventor Dr. Rashad Murad the Medal of Loyalty of the First Degree because of his keenness to develop his profession through the invention of a modern technological way of setting up dental bridges. Dr. Halaki asserted that President al-Assad was very interested in developing scientific research in our universities in order to serve the process of development in all fields in addition to encouraging inventors to continue innovation in their work. Dr. Murad asserted that invention comes at the stage of maturity and professional advancement. He considered honoring scientists as a basic impetus to encourage all students to work in the field of scientific research at the highest levels. During their chase of the remaining terrorist gangs in Qaboon and Harastan, in the Damascus countryside, units of the Syrian army discovered two tunnels used by the terrorists to store their criminal equipment. One of the tunnels was more than 300 meters long with electric wires and containing explosive devices that, that the terrorists transferred to Al Qaboon quarter. Another tunnel extended from farms towards a military point in Harasta. This tunnel was used by the terrorists to attack citizens and Syrian soldiers. A unit of the armed forces ambushed an armed terrorist group south of Al-Mir city in Damascus countryside infiltrated from the Jordanian border. A military source said that the army killed three terrorists and seized the terrorists' weapons and tools. The source added that the weapons seized included B-10 mortar, RPG launchers, 10 automatic rifles, a sniper rifle and large amounts of various ammunition masks and sophisticated telecommunication devices, in addition to seizing their car.
In Palmyra, in the Homs countryside, the security forces in the area of Al Qariatina and its Anvarans found a store full of stolen medical compounds and material to make explosive devices and rockets, in addition to a Saudi car with a right wing steering and a base to launch rockets from a pickup vehicle, computers, and space communi communication equipment. In Homs, as part of targeting the services institutions, an armed terrorist group attacked one of the fuel tanks at the middle station of the Syrian company for tra transporting oil, located in the town of Zara in Telkelah, firing several mortar shells at it. The attack damaged the tank and set fire at its contents of 688 cubic meters of fuel oil. Firefighters from Homs and Tartus brought the fire under control. A unit of the Syrian Arab army eliminated today a gathering of al-Nusra front terrorists near Abdin Crossroad in the town of Tel Qassabin in al Ghab of Hama, killing most of them and destroying their weapons. Another Syrian Arab army unit killed many terrorists in the town of Kifr Nabuda and destroyed their weapons, including heavy machine guns. An official source in Homs said that 78 people from the towns of Hisaya and Jamda who were involved in the current events surrendered themselves and their weapons to the security forces. The situation of all these people was settled and they were released after pledging not to carry weapons or join in sabotage activities. His Beatitude, Patriarch of Antioch and all the East for Roman Orthodox, John X Yazagi paid a visit to the city of Litakia. His eminence, Patriarch Yazagi, has stressed during his visit that all spectrums of the Syrian people adhere to the unity of the Syrian territory. The Patriarch called on the neighboring countries to work for a peaceful political solution to the crisis in Syria, which was and will remain a country of dialogue, love and peace. In Bahrain, the 14th of February movement called on its supporters to demonstrate on the 14th of April as part of the rebellion movement in Bahrain. Demonstrators are to head towards the British, the American and the Saudi embassies in Bahrain condemning their support to the ruling system and their silence at the crimes committed against the peaceful demonstrators. Many groups supported the rebellion movement in Bahrain, including the National Accord Association, whose Secretary General Sheikh Ali Salman spoke at Rally West of Manama condemning an assault against activist Rihani Musawi and the violations for the rights of detainees committed by Al Khalifa rulers, asserting that the demonstrations will continue until the fall of the dictatorship. In Turkey, popular protests continued to call for the resignation of Erdogan in various city squares throughout the country. The protests were not stopped in spite of the criminal practices of Erdogan's forces to suspend suppress the peaceful demonstrators. In Al Istiklal Street, parallel to Taksim Square, Erdogan's forces attacked demonstrators using water pipes, tear gas and rubber bullets. The clashes continued till the early hours of the morning while the demonstrators spread in the streets around Taksim Circle. And with this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching us. For more news and more details about Syria and the region, you can review our bulletin on syrianline.sy. After the break, it's over to Vani with our economic news. God bless you and long live